Let's talk about uh, alloys. What is the difference? Why would you machine these out of 2618? Why not just run down to your local metal shop and pick up some 6061 T6 and machine them out of that? Or, you know, something conventionally available. You know, why did Porsche go from A356 to... I'm pointing at the sonar head so I can't see it. A356 to, well, listed HO350, which is RR350. And I learned something new the other day. I grabbed a 930 turbo cylinder head, and it also said HO350. I thought the 993 turbo was the first one to get that, uh, but I was wrong. So, yeah, Porsche's been doing that for a while. Uh, they've been putting HO350 or RR350 alloy uh, into the turbo cylinder heads. And the, the differences between the two, you've got some thermal expansion rate. A lot of manufacturers for pistons have been using 2618 for a long time. Uh, CP, JE, uh, and, and so on. Uh, even uh, Molly, uh, they always used 4032. Uh, they have now, to be compatible with the LN liners, they're using a 2618 alloy. The expansion rates are different. You need to accommodate for them. Uh, you can you can run them. Um, you can run the 2618 pistons in the, the old school cast A356 liners. Uh, you just need to provide more clearance because the piston is going to grow more than the liner is growing. So you need to accommodate that and make the piston a little smaller. So they tend to slap a little when they're cold. Uh, but if you've got uh, the, the same alloys inside and out, uh, then your expansion rates are going to uh, match or be a lot closer. But what I was surprised to find is the RR350 and the 2618 alloy both have an expansion rate of, get this one now, here, maybe you can see it up there, point zero 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 one two four inches per inch per degree fahrenheit the rr350 is 12 and a half times 10 to the negative sixth inch per inch per degree fahrenheit the 2618 is 12.4 times 10 to the negative six inch per inch per degree fahrenheit basically that is saying that for 100 degrees fahrenheit that sucker is going to grow 1.24 thousandths per inch of material these things being four and a half inches wide take that 1.2 times four and a half inches now you're going to be up like five thousandths growth approximately from zero to 100 degrees or from ambient of you know, 60 or 80 degrees to 100 degrees but these cylinder heads run at 275 something like that they will run hotter than that up in the, the low to mid 300s uh, approaching 400s on turbo heads so now you're talking four or five thousandths times four, now you're getting up in the 16 to 20 thousandths growth. That's pretty huge. I'd also heard that A356 and 2618 were substantially different, but the A356 is only 11.9 times 10 to the negative sixth versus 12.4 and 12.5. So we're barely talking 10 or so percent difference. So versus 20 thousandths growth, you're going to see 18 thousandths growth in A356. Um, but the 4032 alloy was the surprise when I was looking these up. It's barely 10.7. So it's almost you know, 15, approaching 20 percent less growth. So you can see the advantage in running 4032 pistons because uh, at cold, the uh, wrist pins are going to be nice and tight. You, know, you don't have to accommodate for near as much expansion. You can fit them tight. They're cold. Uh, when cold, they're not going to slap. The pistons aren't going to slap around. Uh, the expansion rates are not so significant. So your piston rings also aren't going to have to run such significant gaps or experiment with gaps. So there's a lot of advantages in having low expansion rates, uh, but what happens with the super low expansion rates is that's usually as a result of running a lot of silicon in the alloy. The high silicon content makes them brittle. It does increase the strength, but it does make them more brittle, and thus you have cracks. So I did a uh, little research this morning. Right, let's see if you can read this. <laughs> let's put it right side up. 
So the, the main chart here is the Hudominium RR350. And what this chart is explaining is the test temperature versus the, the stress in KSI. And that's for a, a thousand hours of exposure, and that's the thousand hour exposure effect on the tensile uh, strength properties, and, you know, the overall strength of material, basically. And you can see this is versus Fahrenheit, you know, zero to a hundred, very little change. These are kind of the worst of the RR350 versus the best of the RR350. Uh, they, they did tests over a couple different vendors. As they're warming up, they are dropping down, but we are going all the way to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, these engines should be operating somewhere in this range where these things are maintaining a whole lot of strength. So I was curious how this RR350 held up to the different alloys. So let's go from yeah, well, the, what we would consider you know, the best to the worst. So the 2618 alloy, it was literally off the chart in the cold temperatures. It was up around 55 uh, KSI. I don't remember right now the conversion factor to MPA. So 55 is going to be somewhere in the, I don't know what, 375 MPA range for those scientists out there that want those numbers. Anyway, the strength on the aluminum at 100 degrees on the 2618 is just off the charts all the way to 300 degrees. It literally isn't losing any strength. As soon as it crests 350, it starts dropping down, and then it drops like a stone. Incredible. At 400 degrees, it's getting close to the RR350 strength. At 500 degrees, it's barely mid-pack of the best to the worst tests. So if you're running an engine, high boost, endurance racing, and you've got a bit of a temperature thing, or you're running the engine a bit on the lean side, or your cooling isn't great, or you're, heck, you're on the track and it's freaking 135 degrees out, uh, your cooling just isn't going to be nearly as good. And you may see these temperatures. So luckily it's still mid-pack in the RR350 range. But if you overheat the engine, you've just blown a liner out. Because you've gone now from 55 down to 10 KSI. You're down under 20% of the original strength of the material due to temperature increase. So it, it's ready to fall apart. Whereas the RR350 is actually still hanging in there. The, the best of the best is still almost 25, you know, like 23 or so at KSI on this chart. You know, it's not near the 55, but it only started at 42. So it's not losing its strength near as fast as the 2618 does. But again, that's extreme conditions. What we're hoping is the 2618 is going to be operating in this range where it's still extremely strong and not getting overheated. So part of maintaining the strength of the materials is cooling. So we we're talking about the cooling effect here. Or you've lost the cooling here and there's no airflow going down through the sides, but you've gained a tremendous amount of strength by providing a solid brick. So even if you're yeah, you know, half the strength of materials, you're, you know, 10 times the strength because it's a brick. So we're hoping that that's going to hang on, especially in these, uh, you know, 7 and 800 horsepower turbo engines, uh, air-cooled street turbo engines running pump gas. They run hot. Luckily, I was going to say, luckily this guy's running E85, which will provide an additional cooling effect, but that's wrong. This particular uh, customer doesn't have E85 in his area, so he's going to be running pump probably with meth and that gets hotter uh, versus power. So the 2618 alloy is, you know, is another good choice in, in that. Back to the chart here. I'm having too much fun with this. Okay, so you, you went to the store and you grabbed some 6061T6 aluminum and you went ahead and made your own program on your bench top CNC mill or you, you know, drew it up in CAD and you had somebody go ahead and 3D print one out of 6061T6. Well, you might be in trouble pretty quick 
because at cold temperatures it's really strong but we're barely up to 200 degrees and it idle uh, these engines idle somewhere in the 250 to 275 range you're already mid-pack and then you go and do one run and this stuff has gone from 46 to 12 on the strength so you're 25 percent of the original strength that sonar head's not going to hold up it's going to blow out and that one actually drops down below even the 2618 at 500 degrees it's weaker than 2618 at 600 degrees so let's go to the early heads 911 heads 964 heads all the carrera heads uh, again i believe extreme runs these cold again mid pack of the rr350 it's doing okay we hit 100 degrees we're not even at idle yet and we're at the bottom of the pack, 200 degrees. We're below the RR350 stuff. But it picks back up and kind of hangs in there. It's not too far off of the RR350 at 400 degrees. That was a surprise. I should say a surprise, but it shouldn't be a surprise because it's high silicon casting alloy. The RR350 was basically a a356 on steroids and added copper to it and some high strength alloys to, to keep it up there so it hangs in there pretty good and then it drops down and it almost meets the 2618 down at the 600 degree range which is pretty impressive for a a356 casting alloy that just about everything in the world is cast out of engine blocks uh, transmission cases Okay, well, I think we've kind of beat this one to death anyway with the, the temperature thing. Basically put, uh, you know, you can choose your alloy depending on the circumstance for the ultimate and high strength. Still, the 2618 sounds like it's going to win out to stay away from 6061. The RR350 is a fantastic choice no matter what uh, cold hot it's not quite as strong as 2618 it's got similar expansion rates there's really no reason not to run it the 2618 is a bit stronger on on the low speed so maybe even a better choice for a piston i don't think i'd run a rr350 piston but the 4032 was common the a356 heads are a, a nice choice just like Porsche did for naturally aspirated engines and naturally aspirated upgrades. And just for comparison, to give you an idea on this chart, some of the higher strength nylons that we print in, they would start down here. And then as they approach 400, they would be somewhere down here. So they're pretty low on the chart. Sometimes you hear them claim they're nearly as strong as aluminum. Now that that's the base nylon. If you infuse it with glass, uh, like a PA6 GF30 uh, or the carbon fiber infused nylon, carbon fiber. you can pick up the strength to nearly double. You can start getting up in the 20s here somewhere which is pretty impressive for a printed plastic. Uh, granted, it won't make it to 600 degrees. Uh, the print temperature on those things we use is, well, is about 300 C, you know, which is up here somewhere uh, when we're printing it. So it's absolutely melted at that point. Um, so it would not ever withstand those kinds of temperatures. Uh, and somewhere around 400, it's pretty darn soft already. So it wouldn't be a good choice to try to 3D print a plastic cylinder head. But I just thought I'd throw that in there because it's an interesting tidbit of aluminum versus plastic. And sometimes uh, alloys and materials do start acting a little similar. One of the final items I have in my list here is why do the 993 turbo cylinder heads have that step in them? Um, and it's not just because, well, you know, the liner is shorter. Well, duh, the liner is shorter, the head is taller, because the piston actually extends up above the liner uh, nearly uh, five millimeters. And that puts the top ring right about there. It puts it very close to the mating surface. But what that does do... <laughs> is that jams the piston up further in the cylinder head. So the combustion area is now up in here 
you have this area at the top ring is just below this surface so you've taken the mating surface what Porsche attempted to do is took the mating surface away from the combustion area to try to decrease the temperature of the mating surface to increase the strength of materials. So it, it works well. A 993 turbo engine, not modded, just bolt on. You, you can run them up in the low to mid 500s, you know, 550, 560. You get to that point and you do torch out the arrangement between the, the head and the liner. If you try to run any more torque than that. Uh, the Cura heads are similar, uh, very close. So it did work. Um, it may have worked a little better because the turbo in this area here, it, it runs a metal gasket. It's like a gas-filled, it's got a little spring inside of it, and then it's gas-filled. So if there ever is any seepage between here and here, it heats up the gasket, which expands to fill the, the gap. So it's kind of a last measure of, oh crap, you know, the head's going to blow. Let's try to throw a life jacket out to the situation. But it does help just a little bit. But you know, just keep in mind, you start running in the, the 600 horsepower range, at, you really need to reinforce... Uh, flame ring the cylinder heads, get those mating surfaces interlocked, because there is no head gasket between these things. I mean, this ring, they consider it a head gasket, but it's kind of not. You're still a metal-to-metal -metal, uh, sealing surface between these two. And with the the flame ring in there, it creates an interlocking ring between it, uh, forcing the, the gases to go through, up, over, down, and back. So it's encountering many surfaces to try to get in and around. So yeah, the 993 turbo heads are five and a half millimeters taller. The 993 turbo cylinder liners are five and a half millimeters shorter. This is a career cylinder liner. It should measure, and what I'm talking about is total length. These are, you know, 120. Whereas the 993 turbo would be 114 and a half. It would be right there. And they actually, they shorten it down here. So no, you can't really take one of these liners and cut it down to a 993 turbo height. Because these are aluminum and nicosyl plated. If you try to machine this surface off, you're going to chip the nicosyl. I don't know how good this camera is, but you can see the nicosyl is actually formed up around this edge. So it, it makes it a nice strong adhesion. It's the same thing on the bottom. It comes up and around this edge. It doesn't stop till there. So that'd be a bad idea, trying to do those. You, you may be able to surface grind it or something like that, but you're still going to have the chance of the nicosyl plating coming loose. Anyway, we look forward to running these heads. We, we're excited to see the performance going on. Uh, let's let uh, Ivan do his job. He's already got the turbo system there. He's chomping at the bit to get the rest of the parts. I mean, here's the crank. Um, getting... Uh, cleaned up and uh, oil galleries plugged and ready to ship out. We've got his rods around here somewhere as well. So I already got the, the pistons. He's going to be putting this together. So there's the, the powder billet cylinder heads in all its glory. They're pretty snazzy looking. So check them out. I know he's got some good information online on these things. If you need any more information, he's got a whole write-up on them. Probably powdermachine.com or something like that. I forget right now. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.